Well, hello and God bless. I'm going to be talking today about God's love. I feel like oftentimes it's lost in the Bible here that this is a book about love. This is God's love towards mankind. That's the entire point of this book. Uh, you know, people get lost in the rules and regulations of the Bible, which are, are there for a reason, absolutely, and they're not to be ignored. They're a guidance, but they're all wrapped in God's love. That's why he gave them. If you think about a parent and why they offer out rules to their kids, it's to help them. It's to protect them. It's because of their love for them. And that's what the Bible is. And I just want to touch on that today because I do think that gets lost um, in a society where you know, sometimes the church, uh, they, they try to act like, it's a bunch of Christianity is a bunch of do's or don'ts when Christianity is a relationship with a God who loves you, a, a, a relationship with a risen Savior who died for you. So before we get started, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. I just ask you, Lord, that you give me the words to speak, the words, the words that you want me to say today um, to the people who are tuning in to listen and uh, God, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word. So we just ask for an extra measure uh, of faith today as we read your word, that our faith go out stronger than it came in. And we thank you. We praise you. We ask these things through Jesus. Amen. So if you look starting in creation, all the way back in the book of Genesis, um, in Genesis 1 and 26, the Bible says when God created man... Well, first of all, it references the Trinity, where it says, um, then God said, let us make man in our image. Well, who's, who's he talking about? He's talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity. When God's saying, let us, he's, he's talking about the Godhead. He said, let's make man in our image. He didn't make animals in his image. Uh, he didn't make anything else in his image, and he could have made man in a different image, but he didn't. He decided to make man in his own image. If you think about when you have children, they are to a degree made in your image, right? They have your DNA. They uh, often at times they'll look like one parent or the other, or a combination of both. So that parental feel here already starts immediately when man is first referenced in the Bible. This is the first reference in the Bible to mankind. And instantly, it's an act of, of love and of parenting and the fact that God is our Father. God isn't just some uh, being off in, an, in another uh, part of the world or up in the heavens. God is our Father. God is our Creator. So I think starting at that point is important because then you have a different view of who God is and, and what God means in your life. You know, to be frank, we wouldn't exist if it wasn't for God. Like if, if he didn't decide to create us, we wouldn't even be here to complain about whatever we want to complain about or say, you know, God, uh, God is this or God is that, uh, you know, without him creating us, we wouldn't have breath to either praise him or to criticize him. So those in the world who don't believe, they wouldn't even exist had God not created them. So we see in creation that uh, God is creating in, in his image, in, in the image of the Godhead. And it says, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So not only did God create us in his image, he also made us his highest creation, which again speaks to his love towards us. And the garden, I'm sure you know the story of the fall. If you don't, um, you know, God had given Adam a simple instruction that Adam uh, relayed to Eve of a certain fruit not to eat. Of the tree and the knowledge of good and evil. The devil tempted them. Uh, they ended up eating and then they fell. So once they had committed that original sin and once they had disobeyed God the first time, sin had now entered the world. Now all other man that was comes after Adam and Eve was born in sin. They were born in a sinful race. So they were born in a position of a sinner who needed salvation. Adam wasn't created that way. Adam was born as somebody who had no sin, but chose it. So God gave him and gives all of us the free will to choose whether to serve him or whether not to. He doesn't create robots. He doesn't create people who have to serve him. He creates people who have the option to serve him. And he reveals himself through creation. He reveals himself spiritually in people's hearts. But 
not everybody is going to believe. So that is a personal choice that you need to make. Anybody who tells you that your free will is negated by the grace of God is not preaching from this book. It's just, it's not in there. The free will of mankind is throughout the entirety of the Bible. Now, also the sinful nature is through the entirety of the Bible. So man has a sinful flesh, but that doesn't mean man doesn't have choice. Man doesn't have free will. Man doesn't have the ability to choose what's right. It's just man has a sinful bend from the time they're born. So in Genesis 3 and 21... After they fall, right, they try to put fig leaves on to cover their sin, which is a type of their own flesh, which doesn't work. And God in his love in uh, 3 and 21 says, Also for Adam and his wife, Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. So this was um, one of the first, uh, Genesis 3.15, he talks about um, you know Christ having defeat over the devil. He says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and he shall be your seed. And between your seed and her seed, and he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. That has to do with the cross. But we see here the blood covering for Adam and Eve. And we see the fact that God is providing a sacrifice to cover the sins of Adam and Eve here. And if you think tunics of skin, so something had to die, right, to provide that skin. So there's an animal that had to be, you know, sacrificed to provide that skin. And God is the one who provided it. So we see instantly... God's love in creation, and then God's love in an eventual salvation of mankind. So we go through the entirety of the Old Testament. God's love is shown in a multitude of different ways in the guidance of his people, the guidance of Israel. Um, we see a common theme throughout the Old Testament. And, you know, this is still a theme that happens today where God's people will uh, turn away Um you know, they served other gods. They, you know, forgot about him. God allowed judgment to be brought upon them so that they would essentially wake up and understand that you, there's no other God but me. You're not going to serve these false gods of these other nations and, and get anything good out of it. So if you don't want me, I'm just going to take my hands of protection off you, my hands of blessing off you. And then the other nations would come in and attack Israel or conquer Israel Israel cry out to God, ask for help, ask for salvation. God, as he always does to somebody who cries out for salvation, truly and honestly to him, sent it. And he would send it in the means of, you know, you can go all the way back to um, the, uh, from Egypt. Uh, the, you had the Passover, the blood sacrifice, uh, where they're able to escape Egypt. And then the crossing of the Red Sea, you see, you know, through the entirety of the book of Judges then, all the times that different countries went in and dominated Israel, they would raise up a judge and Israel would have prosperity as long as they followed the Lord. But the Lord's love was always there. It, it never changed because they didn't serve him. The only thing the Lord did was say, if you don't want me by your own free will, you don't want me in this country. You don't want me protecting you. You don't want me as your God. I'm not going to be your God. And, th and that's how God is. He offers his love to you, but you're not forced to take it, okay? And that's what through the entirety of uh, the Old Testament and the book of Israel. And then we eventually see it, you know, towards the end of the timeline of Israel where, you know, the northern kingdom of Israel was completely swallowed up. They completely abandoned God and they ended up being swallowed up into the other countries around Assyria, essentially, but, you know, just foreign nations which quite frankly, that's what they wanted. They, The northern kingdom of Israel had really no intention of serving God pretty much from the beginning from when the kingdom split. So God really gave them what they wanted. The southern kingdom did have glimmers of hope and at least had the temple there. Um, sometimes it was used for good, sometimes it wasn't. But either way, they still had uh, an idea of who God was and they still knew to serve God. And that's why God preserve the remnant, which he always will, and which he's promised to do. He'll certainly preserve a remnant of his people on this earth for as long as this earth exists. So, you know, you have the, the helping and provision of Israel, and now we have the life of Christ. So, obviously, this was the ultimate pouring out of love um, in, the, in the Bible, and that's really the theme of the entire Bible is Christ, is, you know, man needing a Savior, God showing us like what you know people do essentially on their own when they're 
turning from God, they're serving God, they're turning from God, you know, back and forth. And then from there, we have uh, God sends a, a Savior in his own image, right? His own only begotten Son. Why? Because the blood of bulls and goats could not pay for sin. So he sends Christ here to die. And then we see some of the most popular verses that, you know, you would probably know of in the Bible that talk about God's love, that just reiterate that the salvation plan is a plan that's rooted in love. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Right? God, that's God showing his love. He wants mankind to be saved. He doesn't want mankind to perish. He doesn't want mankind to live a life of evil or of sin. He wants man to, to be reconciled to him and to live a life of peace and of love in his presence. We see in, in Romans 5 and 8, too, the same thing. Now we go into some of the doctrines of the Bible. And in Romans 5 and 8, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So we see we're still sinners. All right, so we talked about free will versus grace. You know, we're sinners. We're born in sin. Our bend is towards sin. Uh... We're born in a sinful race. Without a Savior, we're going to die lost and apart from God. So there is a position that we start in, and there's a position that God wants us to be in, and it's all through love. And I feel like, you know, to wrap this up, this is the message that we need to go out into the world with. You know, as believers, you know, if you're if you're a believer today, and you're reaching out to the world saying, do this, don't do that, yeah, I don't know that that's necessarily the right way to approach it. I'm not saying that you can't call out sin, and I'm not saying that you can't address individual sins when it comes up. But that's not the overall theme of the Bible. The overall theme is that God loves you. And God wants, God wants you to be back, reconciled to Him, back in His presence, where you belong. God doesn't want you living this life of sin and destruction and you know ultimate death, ultimate spiritual death. God doesn't want that. And they know that. You know, people know, I knew it before I got saved that I wasn't in a right place. I knew my life wasn't going where, where it should be going, right? I knew I was doing things I shouldn't do. And I wanted to hear that. I didn't want to just hear you were doing things wrong because quite frankly, I already knew it. Whether I was willing to admit it or not, I knew that things were wrong. But what I needed to hear was that God loved me. Well, what I needed to hear was that God hadn't forgotten about me. That's the message I think we need to reach out with. Again, you don't have to back down from sin. You don't have to back down from the things that are clear in this book as wrong. Absolutely not. But is that the message that God reached out to us with? I would say no. I'd say God reached out to a message of us with love. Yes, in that message, there are do's and don'ts. But the overall message to this world is that God loves him. And if you don't know Christ today, if you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you can do that right now. This message may be you know, God reaching out to you. And I'm not saying there's anything special about me or what I'm saying, but God uses people on this earth. He used a messenger, he used my brother to get to me and share the gospel with me. And maybe he's using me to preach this to you. But you just need to know, if you ask God for forgiveness of your sins, Christ has already paid that price. And he'll forgive you and he'll reconcile and you'll be saved. And God will start to live and work in your life. Right now, if you're not saved, if you've not accepted Christ, God's just trying to get your attention. He's trying to get you to grab onto this lifeboat before the ship sinks. But if you are saved, your life is a life that's going to be you know, more abundant than you can imagine. You're, you're, it's not going to be perfect. But spiritually speaking, you're going to have a hope that the world doesn't have. I see that in the world now as there's really no hope. They get so scared and confused when they see things that are going on and they don't understand. I know, according to this book, where we're all going. Yeah, there's some things that might make me a little anxious or make me a little scared, but at the end of the day, I know where I'm going. So I have an ultimate peace that I know that God is in control. So I just want to pray for you today if, if, that's, if that's you. Heavenly Father, I ask, Lord, if there is one who's watching this right now who doesn't Know you, Lord, that you lead them to you, that you lead them into your arms the same way you did to me, the same way you've done for millions and millions of others. Lord, I just ask that today be the day of their salvation. Now be their appointed time that they turn from their sin and they ask for forgiveness and accept Christ as their Savior because that's the only salvation from sin and that's your ultimate love. The love that was shed and the blood that was shed on Calvary 
that's the ultimate love, Lord. And that's what I want people to know who are listening to this, that you love them. You have an undying love for them. You created them. You brought them into this world. And you wouldn't have done that if you didn't love them. And you just want them to turn to you and accept you and accept the free offer of salvation that you've given. So, Lord, I ask if anybody hears this and, and is crying out now and is, is struggling in this world and in this life, that they know that they can have a peace through you. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And God bless.